is Focus with Jack Cottle. Good evening, I'm Jack Cottle. Welcome to this month's edition of Focus. This month we're talking about the Lakota Nation Invitational <laughs> Tournament, which is getting ready to start very soon right here in Rapid City. Two guests with us to talk about that tonight. Steve Allender, he is the mayor of Rapid City. Also with us is Brian Brewer, the founder of the Lakota Nation Invitational and currently serving as the event's basketball director. A little history, Lakota Nation Invitational coming into its 42nd year with this year's event coming up December 12th through the 15th at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center here in Rapid City. The first Lakota Nation Invitational was held back in 1976 at Red Cloud High School. A couple of years later, the event moved up here to Rapid City, and that is where it has been ever since. Brian Brewer, we're going to start with you talking about some of the history of the event. What were some of the uh, events and some of the, uh, the uh, kind of a tumultuous time down there in Pine Ridge at that point that led you to start this tournament up? The first two years was at Pine Ridge and not Red Cloud. Oh, I'm sorry, Pine that's, Ridge. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. Um, I was coaching at Pine Ridge. Dave Archambault was at um, Red Cloud. Um, no, he was at Little Own. And um, the three, four high schools, this was right after Wounded Knee, and we were having very difficult times trying to get teams to play us. Uh, no one wanted to come to the reservation. And uh, many of the schools didn't want us to go to their schools, either afraid we violence might follow us after Wounded Knee. So we were talking, and um, they said, Brian, why don't you see if you can put on a tournament so we can fill our schedule? So I said, well, I can do that. So. I start calling uh, some Indian schools in Kansas, Nebraska, and a few in South Dakota, and they came to Pine Ridge and we had our first 18, eight, 18 tournament. That was all Indian tournament. We held that there in Pine Ridge for the first two years. But um, our gym was too small. There were people lined up outside trying to get in, upset because they couldn't get in. Adam and we just packed them in and the fire marshal was in there threatening threatening me that he was going to close it up and uh, the third year was the opening of the brand new civic center so we moved it to rapid city and we played the first basketball game there we've been there ever since this will be our 40th year in rapid city uh, how were you guys received at first you said maybe not as warmly as you're received now as far as moving the tournament up. yeah there. well there was something new to rapid city uh, there was a large influx of Indians coming in, uh, and I think uh, some people didn't didn't want that or they didn't like it. Um, but uh, we had some problems with uh, people coming from the reservations to Rapid City with roadblocks, things like that. Um, very difficult. Some of them uh, finding trying to find a place to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of places weren't welcome. You know, and it wasn't that many years ago. I believe about 13 years ago, where we had one of our teams who re refused service at one of the restaurants in Rapid City. And uh, the team called me and I called the mayor's office. And uh, they came and picked me up and we went to the establishment and we got it all straightened out. And that was the last time we ever had any problems. But we've always been uh, working uh, with uh, the mayor's office, city of Rapid City. Um, been working with Steve for many years when he was a chief of police. Uh, he he helped us uh, on on many different things. So it's, it's, we've come a long ways. I have to say that. Uh, right now we come to Rapid City. We feel very welcome. Uh, it's it's really great. Um, and I know there's always some little things, you know. But uh, Rapid City this is the home of Al and I, and that's what we call it. This is our home, you know. The, I know that sometimes there was pressure for us to leave, and uh, the board said, no, we're staying in Rapid City, you know. And we're really anxious for the expansion of the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we're bringing about 2,500 students participating in our activities. But our activities are really limited right now, what we can do. We try to add a couple this year. We're, we're starting a, a spelling bee. For the first mm -hmm. time we're gonna have a spelling bee for, for our children. Uh, we have chess tournaments started last year, but we have a lot of different activities, cultural, academic, but our basketball teams were limited to 16 teams, but with the expansion, we're going to add eight more basketball teams immediately, and we'll be adding some other events also. So we're, we're really anxious, and I want to thank Steve for making that happen, because we were really worried that we might. You know, we're just stuck. We just can't grow anymore. 
Uh, and Steve, you're the mayor now, but your first experience with the LNI was as a patrol officer in Rap City, a lot of tournaments. How have you seen the reception and the way things are handled with the tournament differing now from when you started, you said, back in the 80s? Well, it's, it's very much different than it was back then. Uh, we had to pay special attention to the area around the Civic Center. You know, these tournaments bring in a number of young people, uh, therefore a little bit more uh, mischievous uh, uh, atmosphere. And when it, when it concerned native kids, then there was an especially negative uh, light cast on it and the tournament. So uh, things weren't always... Uh, as good as they are today, and I know uh, the LNI, uh, I think Brian's being a little uh, modest and professional here, but I mean, it was, there were some hostilities early on in that LNI tournament, and uh, the events that, that caused the board to consider whether or not Rapid City was the right place were pretty traumatic to, to the, the native youth and to Rapid City, and we just didn't realize how good of a thing we had. So today, flash forward to today, it is uh, completely a different uh, uh, atmosphere. Um, and this is not window dressing, but the merchants in Rapid City, the hotels, uh, everyone who sees this tournament uh, today sees it as a positive thing, where it was not always that way. Uh, and to talk about law enforcement, kind of a unique program that you guys now have Rapid City officers joining with tribal officers. How does that start and how successful, how does that work? It started um, uh, maybe as, my, as many as uh, 10 uh, years ago, 8 to 10 years ago, when uh, there was some trouble staffing the Civic Center for security during these big events. So I had a conversation with Brian, and uh, we struck a deal where uh, Brian would match our uh, security manpower person for person with tribal officers. So that brought tribal officers from various agencies into Rapid City in uniform. And we would pair them up with Rapid City police officers. My, my uh, contribution to all this really is that uh, we spend enough time focusing on what's different about us. Let's spend some time focusing on what's the same. And the same is police officers are the same. Doesn't matter where they work. They all have the same uh, struggles and the same challenges. They go through the same things. And they're basically the same people, same type of people. So uh, we did that and we found that to be, we, we assumed it would be uh, positive but uh, we never imagined how positive. So that has helped develop an exchange program with uh, uh, Oglala uh, Public Safety. Uh, dozens of our Rap City police officers have been down there to ride with their officers. We have a much, much better working relationship today with the uh, Oglala tribe than we ever have. And so uh, this, this LNI tournament has brought so many blessings to Rapid City, but I, but lately, in the last few years, there is a thirst for Native American culture. Uh, not only by the Native residents, but by the non-Native people as well. So we're getting people who are seeing this uh, basketball tournament as a cultural experience in addition to a sporting event. Uh, Brian, one more thing about the law enforcement perspective from this year, former president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe as well. Uh, he says successful in the police department from, from the Rapid City perspective. How about from the tribal end? Do those guys feel like this is a, a good thing for them to be doing as oh, well? Yes, they love it. They love coming up here. and uh, I think the officers there, they probably fight over who gets to come <laughs> up from each reservation. Uh, but they enjoy coming up, working with the Rapid City police officers. And what's really great about it is we have a large number of Rapid City, the Indian population, attend our tournament. So the Rapid City police know those people. Mm -hmm. And we got the reservation police. They know the kids and stuff from the reservations. So it really works out great. You know, uh, uh, we have no problems with it. Uh, the people see it. Uh, we've had some incidents where we had the shooting and things like that. And we were brought in a lot of police. Uh, and I remember the next day, police officers were leaving that night from all the reservations coming to Rapid City. And the next day, we were flooded with police at the Civic Center. And everyone was a little afraid, what's the people going to say? Is it going to, you know, how's that going to feel? And the people were really receptive. Everywhere I went, I saw people shaking hands with the police officers. 
thanking him for being there. So it, uh, it was really, so when we had bad things, good things happened. Uh, when we had the incidents at the ice arena, even though it wasn't Al and I, it really affected us. And you know, that started the community conversations. A lot of things started, you know, and Al and I, we, we, it was the all Indian tournament, but it was started because of racism, because no one, they, no one wanted to play us Indian teams. So after we got it going, Chuck Cooney and I, we were sitting in Rapid City one year getting ready for the tournament. And we had Custer came in. We invited him because Las Custer, Larry Lugens wanted to come into the tournament. He said, I want to play the best teams. I want into that tournament. So Chuck said, Brian, let's change the name to the Lakota Nation Invitational where we can invite non-Indian teams. And let's make this our, our, our reconciliation. Let's bring something good out of what was started as the All Indian Tournament. So that has always been our focus is reconciliation. And uh, it's, it's worked very well. Uh, but right now we're getting so much pressure from the Indian schools mm -hmm. that want to get into the tournament. Right now Custer is the last non-Indian school in our tournament. Uh, but uh, you know we, we've had a, you know St. Thomas Moore uh, in there. You know we had Douglas in there. We had Hot Springs in there. We've had a lot of non-Indian teams play in our tournament, and it all it all went well. All right, we got to take a break. We'll continue our look at the Lakota Nation Invitational when we continue with this month's edition of Focus. And good evening, I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus. We're talking about the Lakota Nation Invitational. We get going on December 12th down at the Civic Center. Brian Brewer, the founder of the tournament also, now the basketball director. This thing has become a lot more than basketball. You've got, uh, what do you got, hand games in there, girls basketball, wrestling, uh, knowledge bowl, Lakota language bowl, business plan competition, art show. What led to the addition of all these other things into this? Uh. It's kind of funny, a little story. We had basketball going, and I was uh, coaching at uh, Pine Ridge and athletic director. And, and Chuck Cooney and I started. I said, Chuck, we should add wrestling. Oh, I don't want any wrestlers up there, you know. <laughs> Stink up the place. <laughs> so it took me two years. And he finally said, all right, Brian, go ahead, have wrestling. So we brought in the wrestling. That was a huge success. It really helped our reservation programs because kids wanted to wrestle at Al and I under the lights mm -hmm. in the finals. So it really helped us. And from there, we start. We went to volleyball and cross country, and then we started adding more events in the arena. Uh, the hand game tournament. The hand game tournament is now our biggest event. We have 32 basketball last basketball teams last year. We had close to 50 hand game teams coming in from all the different reservations. So that is what our Lakota language, we've had like 35 teams coming in. Our Knowledge Bowl, they're all growing every year. Uh, so last year we had over 2,500 students participating. And this year it'll probably be more. And with the expansion of the Civic Center with more events, uh, we're starting the spelling bee this year. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of elementary kids' schools will be coming out to participate in that. So. We're looking way for ways to get more students involved with the Lakota Nation Invitational. So how important is it to get the kids who aren't athletes and give them a chance to get out there and shine a little bit? That's what this whole thing is about. It's just not about basketball or, or athletics. All of our students get to come up and, and perform in something. Uh, when we started archery, we didn't know how to, you know, archery is now packed. You can't, it's hard to get in there. There are so many shooters in there now. So we're trying to to have activities where all the students can participate. You don't have to be an athlete, you know, you can get into the academics. Uh, we have cultural events, the powwows, things like that. So we're hoping that all students will be able to participate in l and in some form or another. Uh, Steve Allender is Rep City Mayor. How important is it for the city? We have a lot of smaller Native American events throughout the year, but to have something this big and this widespread that's taken up that much space for four days. It's extremely important. It's important from a community perspective, I think, because uh, when we all come together for an event like this is when we really start to form those relationships. We, uh, we become comfortable with what was once uncomfortable. So it's, it's very important. And, uh, uh, you know, it is just prior to Christmas. There's a, a lot of shopping and a lot of other uh, spending that goes on here, too. Uh, but I say that's not the primary benefit by any stretch. Um, uh, so I, I say yes to more events like this. And when the uh, LNI expands, 
that'll be even better. Uh, if we can become the uh, largest uh, Native youth sporting event uh, in the nation, that will continue to uh, make Rapid City and uh, the local Native uh, communities shine. Uh, now the city also, the city kind of rolls out the red carpet. What does the city do in the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Chamber to welcome everybody and, and to get this thing up and going? Well, a couple of years ago we decided, you know, that, the, that we're, we're just, with the history of Brian jokes sometimes, I don't think it's totally a joke though, that they had to sneak <laughs> into town and they had to sneak back out. Uh, in the early days, we wanted to make a statement that Rapid City really appreciates this tournament and everyone who travels here for it. So we meet the buses. We try to arrange all the transportation of the, the bulk of the teams and we meet the buses out on the highway and we bring them in with a, a police escort. And then we have community members, many of them business uh, owners, who are waiting at the Civic Center uh, for a red carpet uh, arrival. And then we have a meal. And uh, so this is really, uh, it's really become something that we've, we, in the beginning, we thought we were doing it for the LNI, but it turns out we're really doing it for us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good for everybody, and it's, uh, again, just, just helping to uh, make sure everyone knows between the, the mm -hmm. LNI tournament and Rapid City that we're on the same page, uh, that we appreciate the, uh, uh, the effort and the dedication to Rapid City. I mean, there's a great amount of loyalty here. As Brian mentioned, there were a number of times when they could have chosen an easy exit to go somewhere else. But uh, after the last incident, everyone was on pins and needles, and I remember Brian saying, we're staying in Rapid City. Rapid City is our home. And uh, that's when I knew in my mind that we had to uh, take this more seriously. Uh, Brian, why'd you, why did you guys decide to stay? There were calls there for you guys to leave, and there was a while, not real long ago, there was, well, we're gonna stay here, we're gonna Sioux Falls. Why stay here? We, uh, this is, uh, when we come to Rapid City, it's like we're coming home to the Black Hills. You know, uh, we go, if we went to Sioux Falls, we wouldn't have that. You know, and uh, no matter what reservation you're coming from, when you get to Rapid City, you're in the Black Hills and we're home. And this is like, we want to consider that, you know. And, um, you know, a lot of the teams are from West River. A lot of our biggest supporters are from West River, uh, the Lakotas and non-Lakotas. So we, we want to stay, you know, and uh, we made that decision. Um, and we could have went somewhere real easy if we wanted to. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we knew it was going to be tough. We would, you know, we had some criticism for it that, you know, but no matter where you go, there will be racism and things like that. But over the years, we have made so many friends uh, back and forth, you know. With, uh, things have really changed for us, uh, and uh, we really feel that uh, to end racism, it has to come from our youth, and it's, we can't change the older people, we can't do that, but we're really hoping that uh, we can do a lot of things with our young people through education and, and invite them to come to so participate in some of our programs. For the people that come, how much has this tournament become a destination, a gathering that you're looking forward to each year. I'm gonna to get to see everybody again. And this is, you know, and this this is, is where we go. The thing about Al and I, it's like a big family reunion. We have people that go to the basketball games that don't like basketball, they didn't care <laughs> about basketball, but they get to go there and they get to see people that they only see once a year. We have people that fly in from California, Arizona, New Mexico every year. Every year they fly into Rapid City for the tournament, Minnesota. So it is a, a family gathering and that's kind of the way we, we look at it. And, and it's very successful. It All works. Right. We got to take another break. We'll continue our look at the Lakota Nation Invitational when we come back with this month's edition of Focus. And good evening. I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, talking about the upcoming Lakota Nation Invitational that gets going on December 12th down at the Civic Center. Brian Brewer, the founder of this big event. Brian, we're talking about all the different things that are going on from basketball to Lakota Language Bowl. Uh, also, you're talking about this is a big art show as well. It's the largest high school art show in the state of South Dakota, and it runs for four days. And uh, I'd just like to say that all of our activities are free for the public, except for the basketball. You want to go watch basketball, you, you have to pay. But all of our activities, all of our events are free. So we'd like to invite people to just to stop down, visit us, see what our children are doing. And uh, it's, uh, 
I think it would be something if they would. You know, don't don't be afraid of us. <laughs> We're good people, yeah. But we would like to welcome everybody to come down and uh, just meet us, you know, and uh, take part, take part. Uh, Steve Allender, Rapid City Mayor. Uh, as you look at it, what's the biggest benefit to having this through here? I think the biggest benefit of the LNI, LNI from my perspective is the sharing of that time and space when we're in the Civic Center for several days. And as Brian just mentioned, the, uh, the ability for Rapid City citizens to come and, and go throughout the week uh, at this event, it's extremely important. And uh, this is an arts and culture experience where you can find some sporting events being played as well. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, arts and culture is important to the community. It's important to Rapid City. It's important to continue to forge the relationship we have with not only the LNI organization, but with the Native American people, generally speaking. Now, Brian, this year's event starts here on the 12th. Yes. How about the future? Where do you see this whole thing going down the road? Does this become a national event instead of the regional event that it has now? What kind of vision do you have for it? Well, we're uh, talking to ESPN. Uh, they would like to cover it if we had a national uh, Indian boxing tournament here. Mm -hmm. We've had boxing in a few years, but we just don't have enough room at the Civic Center. So we had to stop it, just not enough room. But we would like to, uh, we have a number of boxing organizations that would like to step in and help us do this. And uh, if we can have a national one, ESPN will come in and cover it. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. Lacrosse, uh, skateboarding, I wish we had an indoor <laughs> skating thing here. I have a lot of requests for that, where they would like to come in and compete. So there's a lot of different things we could do if we had the room. Now, you started this back in 76. Did ever in your mind you envision it becoming this no. when you got this thing going no. back then? We just thought we'd have a little 18 tournament for a couple of years and would hopefully get our schedules back and things would continue. I just can't imagine what it, life would be now without Al and I for our schools and everything. You know, it's really taking on its own life. What goes through your mind when you now look back and just really sit and think about what this has become? Oh, it's, it's almost unbelievable, you know. It's, how did this happen? How could it happen, you know? Um, especially in the Indian organization, you know. And because I gotta say this, you know, they, people say, you know, the Indians can't do anything right. And we've proven them wrong. You know, we came up here and we're doing something right. We're doing it the right way. And uh, uh, I think uh, we have to be proud of what we've done. And uh, uh, we look to reach out to, to everybody, you know, to, to shake hands with everybody. And, Mend a lot of, there's, there's been a lot of hard feelings and stuff, but it'd be nice to get those men because our children have to grow up here. And we want them to grow up. My grandson, I want him to grow up in a, a good environment without any racism or things like that. So you'd like to see everybody down there, natives, non-natives, natives. whoever you are, come on down? Come down. Yes. Enjoy. All right. Again, Lakota Nation Invitational starts on the 12th. Uh, ends on the 15th. You got the teams arriving on the 11th is the yes. big to-do that we talked about there just mm -hmm. a little bit ago. And uh, great event. Looking forward to it. Uh, Rapid City Mayor Steve Allender and Brian Brewer, the uh, founder of the LNI, also now the basketball director. I want to thank you guys for coming up. And uh, hopefully this will be another great event this year. Looking forward to it. Hopefully everyone at home has a chance to come out and see it. Well, that will do it for us for this month's edition of Focus. Hope to see you again the first Sunday night of next month. Good night.